Welcome back, Bitcoin developers. This is video number four in a series on the Bitcoin DevKit CLI tool. We're going to generate addresses so we can receive coins, and then we'll send them right back out. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a brand new wallet using the workflow we went over in video three. Okay, so now I have my descriptor and I'm ready to go. At this point, you know me, I like the REPLs, so that's what I'm gonna use, but of course uh, you don't have to. I'm gonna sync the wallet and get the balance. So once I have my wallet loaded up and ready to go, I can just use the get new address command to generate an address. And I'm gonna copy that and go in a faucet to get some coins. This is my favorite faucet. And now when I sync the wallet, and I get the balance, I see that the coins are there. If I query the wallet for the list of transactions it knows about, I see that transaction will be there. And notice that the confirmation time field is null. This is because the transaction has not been mined yet. But once it does, I'll see a block height and a timestamp on it. So we're ready to send those coins back to the faucet. They provide a uh, return address for their testnet coins. And this is a side note, but testnet coins are actually quite hard to find and they're an amazing tool. So we should always treat them with care and try to send them back to faucets instead of just deleting the wallets uh, with coins stuck inside of them. Okay, so the workflow we use when we send coins using the Bitcoin dev kit breaks into three separate parts. First, we create a PSBT, then we sign it, and then we broadcast it. And if you're new to this idea, it's important to understand it well, because in many cases, that sort of thing is hidden from us. And so, um, for example, if you use a typical mobile wallet and you pay for something online, the wallet will do all of that in one go. So it'll create, sign, and broadcast a transaction. So it might not be obvious that this is what's happening in the background and, and that these can be done separately. So I want to explain why that breakdown is useful and why it's important. The first part of this workflow is to create a PSBT. PSBT stands for Partially Signed Bitcoin Transaction, and it's basically a Bitcoin transaction broken down into a data structure that can be passed around and parsed by different software so that they can perform different tasks on them. They're interesting for a ton of reasons, but one of them is that you can build an initial unsigned PSBT even if you only have the XBUBs available. That is, you couldn't sign anything on it you just know the addresses and the fields that do need to be signed. And so that means that the PSBT can be built by an application you wouldn't trust with your private keys on, but that might have an XBUB available. It would be able to build the PSBT and then you could pass that to a hardware wallet, say, that would then be able to apply a signature on it. You should check out BIP 174 and BIP 370 if you're interested in learning more about PSBTs. So that's why the first step is to create a PSBT without any signatures on it. In our case, it's the same software creating and then signing the PSBT. We'll do it on the CLI, but it doesn't have to be. The second part of the workflow is the signature step. The signature step can involve many parties or even just multiple devices. That's one of the many powers of PSBTs. They're little data structure and we pass them around and each party can apply their own signatures to it and it sort of grows as it goes and you can pass that uh, PSBT with one more signature applied to it. So for example, if we have a multi-sig that requires three signatures, we could build that PSBT completely unsigned and then pass it around to all three parties one at a time. And each of them would be able to parse it, see where they need to sign, sign it, and then pass it to the next party until we have a PSBT that's complete. And because that format is standardized, 
it's easy to share between different software. So that means that different parties can use whatever they want to apply their signatures. It's great for interoperability, and it's the reason why the Bitcoin Dev Kit uses them out of the box. And the last part is step three, where we broadcast. Now, once you have a fully signed PSBT ready to be broadcast, you obviously don't need to broadcast it right away or even from that same device. So that's one reason why that step is separate. Also, you could just give the BDK CLI a fully signed PSBT you created from somewhere else completely, and it would be able to just broadcast it. So this is what we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna create this PSBT using the create TX command. And it requires an argument called two, and we give it an address. This is the address back to the faucet and an amount in Satoshi's. When I do this, you notice that I receive an object and it has a field called PSBT. This is my partially signed Bitcoin transaction and it's not ready to go yet. It hasn't been signed. So the CLI returns the PSBT in a format called base64 and that was my step one. Now I'm gonna sign that PSBT using the sign command, which takes an argument, PSBT. And now notice that the object returned has a field called is finalized and it's set to true. It means that that PSBT is ready to go. In the case of a multi-sig, say I was the first signer out of five, this field would be marked as false, meaning that the PSBT is not ready to be broadcast. And now I have a PSBT that's fully signed and it's ready to go. So I'm just gonna broadcast it. So there you have it. I think those four videos contain all the basics to get you started on the Bitcoin Dev Kit CLI. And as you uh, make full use of the help tool, you'll find there's a lot more things you can do. Take a look at our docs on bitcoindevkit.org. You'll find more advanced stuff there, including a tutorial on how to do sort of what we did here, but in a two of three multi-sig with a time lock. So a lot more advanced. Overall, I think the CLI is a really cool tool to start tinkering with Bitcoin wallets. And over time, you end up using it um, for all sorts of little tasks. I recommend, for example, creating an alias in your Bash profile that starts a testnet wallet with a one word command. And from there, you always have testnet coins available to you and you can use them to play around with nodes and other software. I'm Thunderbiscuit and I'm a contributor to the Bitcoin Dev Kit. If you'd like to see more content like this, uh, let us know. In the meantime, have fun and we'll see you in the next series.